Hey, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, I have uh, 10, 11 a.m. Uh, this is the meeting uh, for the MPO uh, project, or M MPO committee meeting. Uh, check to see if we have a quorum, and we do have a quorum. Uh, so I call this meeting to order. Uh, first item of business is, is again, welcome everyone. Uh, second item of business is let's review and approve the minutes of the uh, November 10, 2018 meeting. Uh, do I have a motion? Sure, let's go ahead and motion and second, and then we'll discuss it. Okay. Okay. I'll go ahead and make that motion. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, discussion? Yes, I would make a request under uh, item three of new business that uh, in the discussion of uh, Ms. Geiger's uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization information, you know, I'm, my interest here is drainage, and so she made, I thought, what was a very important comment about drainage, and that there's no dedicated funds for drainage within the MPO projects. However, as part of a larger project, 15% of that could be dedicated to drainage. So I, I think I would suggest we add that to the minutes because it's a pretty important point with respect to the drainage piece anyway. I, I second it. I have no second. And I agree. I mean, the flooding is, is certainly something that has affected us, at least directly or indirectly. Oh, yeah. Most certainly. Brian, Brian, did you uh, did you capture that? that okay. <clears throat> okay. Is there any other items to discuss on the minutes? Yes, on uh, that uh, Miss Geiger made uh, regarding, regarding the uh, uh, access to VIA information. She gave the name of Leroy Alloway at VIA, and the his uh, uh, email is Leroy dot Alloway, A-L-L-O-W-A-Y, at via, V-I-A, info, I-N-F-O, dot net. I'd like to add that uh, reference to Mr. Alloway's email at the end of this section on the uh, uh, comments of Ms. Geiger. With with those two with those two items, any any discussion on uh, on Mr. McCormick's uh, addition? So, again, any discussion on Mr. McCormick's? No. Okay. Any further discussion on the minutes? The only addition that I would make is um, uh, her additional comments that she holds training classes basically available for all the various schools, particularly the ones on the Northwest Military, train the kids how to go and cross the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the road there and where to cross and that sort of thing like that. That's addressed in the uh, Discuss New Ideas Accept Input. Uh, she, I mentioned there that Ms. Geiger. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I missed that one. Never mind. I withdraw that. <laughs> Safety training, that's great. Okay, ex excellent. I'm glad you got that in there. All right, thank you, Mark. Uh, okay. So I'll go ahead and hold this one as we go, but if we can leave the mics hot and make it easier. As I mentioned um, to Mr. McCormick, um, I used to work with Mr. Alloway uh, at City Hall years ago, and so I know him well, well and I was going to set up a meeting with Mr. McCormick and him at some point. So. Okay. Uh, no other discussion. There are two, two amendment item, two, two items that were added to the minutes. Um, Request the request the approval of this, of the vote on this, uh, with the two amended items. Uh, all in favor? All right, passed unanimously. Thank you.
Okay, next item is discuss and review the traffic information from Castle Hills Police Department. <clears throat> At the last meeting, as we all know, we had a, uh, we had a, a Chief Siemens that was here that went over the, uh, the traffic counts. I know we had lots of questions with him. The, the thought for today, or at least in my mind, and this is open to discussion and interpretation, was we wanted to discuss some of the, of, we wanted to focus on some of those traffic counts. I think we were concerned about Antler. Uh, we're also concerned about, about West Avenue as, as the corner. Carolwood, I think, was perhaps another point of discussion as well, too. In Carolwood. Uh, to my knowledge, the chief was not necessarily notified of this meeting. I know I, know I did not reach out to him directly on this one, uh, but I wanted to make, I want to bring it up for, for discussion and topic. I know, Skip, you may have, you had some thoughts on this, too? Uh, we had asked it last meeting, and since he's not here, it's apparent there's not going to be any more information this time. So I suggest we table this for our next meeting and give the police another opportunity to come up with whatever additional information they may have that will help us address the question of traffic flow on some of these side streets where problems have arisen. And I note also that in this coming uh, city council meeting, there is a proposal to add a stop sign at an intersection that will be uh, discussed at this coming meeting. And I don't know what the uh, what the basis of it is. I haven't looked at the background information on that mm -hmm. agenda item yet, mm -hmm. but that's worth us looking at someplace along the way. I'm sorry, I, which which intersection was the stop sign being considered for? I, I didn't hear. I Honey, don't recall. Honeysuckle, it's, uh, uh, it's the street that goes into Honeysuckles from the estates. Uh, uh, is that the Sheffield? The, or, or, uh, Sir Arthur? Or Sir Arthur. Sir Arthur. Is it Sir, Arthur? Uh -huh. Sir Arthur, we're, we're teasing to Sheffield. <coughs> There's a question of the stop sign going there. Installing a uh, stop sign on Honeysuckle Lane at the intersection of Sir Arthur Road. Okay, cool. I need to speak into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> okay. The proposed agenda item for Tuesday night on a stop sign is uh, Honeysuckle Lane at the intersection of Sir Arthur Court. So Skip made the uh, recommendation to table side of the next meeting. Uh, we need to formalize that or, or move it to next meeting? Uh, yeah, I suppose we, uh, we have to have a motion okay. and vote okay. on it. So All I right. move that we table it till the next meeting to give the police an opportunity to respond and then need a second. Okay, I'll, I'll second it. Um, all in favor? Okay, unanimous. Thank you, Skip. Okay, agenda item number five, discuss new ideas and accept input uh, from the public. Are you looking at the minutes or the agenda items? I'm looking at the minutes. Oh, the agenda. You, we actually we actually have. Ding, 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 ding. My we apologies. I was looking at the minutes. So you win so the prize. Stand, stand two, corrected two, three, here. four, and five. Um, yeah. Review and improvements regarding that. Select a permanent secretary. Did you talk to anybody perhaps that would be interested in that? I, I, I did not. The only, the only eligible people here, the permanent secretary right now, I think, is Jack. And Skip, I guess you could be eligible if you so well, if you so chose. One of the problems we have is we have somebody on staff right now who can do it. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to continue to do it if that's comfortable with the council, until we get some staff arrangements made where there may be somebody else who can do it. I'd I'd love not to have to do it, but <laughs> you know, it's going to have to be done. So right, I'd hold high support Skip's. Uh, uh, Put himself out there to do that. Warm volunteering to, uh, no, to, to do it. I'm going to say that this is this is a temporary position. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I I had actually started drafting minutes, and then Mr. McCormick uh, sent me his, and so kind of <coughs> slight collaboration, and then that's when I sent him out. So. And I'll yeah, and I modified it in, uh, to the template as you see here, but we can, we can tag team it. Okay. So until we, until we come up with an alternative, we'll just we'll continue so. along that. I'm sorry. I, said until I was just saying that it would make your life a lot easier, that's all. Okay. Well, spoken as the other only potential candidate, I heartily agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your support, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have our interim solution, so thank you. Thank you, Skip, for volunteering. And, and thank you, Ryan, for, for volunteering to collaborate and get these minutes done, so appreciate that. Okay, let me get back on track here. I'm going to apologize for reading off the wrong, uh, the wrong minutes here, uh, <coughs> the wrong agenda. So, <coughs> item number four: discussion and possible action on the, on Castle Hills Exchange uh, Library. Uh, Skip. That's, yeah, that's, 
That's something I've brought up a couple of times. We have uh, two sets of bookshelves. I'll get this. One over here in the council chamber and, and another set of bookshelves in the uh, community room. Uh, they were a legacy from one of our deceased residents some time ago. As I understand it, the idea was that they will be, they will constitute essentially an exchange library. So I have two thoughts. One is that we ought to put all the books in one place rather than have them in two places. So I'm thinking about bringing those three shelves in the, in the, con in the community chamber down here to, to this end of the, of the council chambers. I think there's space for them. The other thing is that if we're gonna, if we're gonna have an exchange library, we need to be able to use it. So we need to have volunteers from the community who are willing to organize that stuff in some kind of format. I'm thinking that most everything can be fiction by, fiction by author and nonfiction, we can break it down into two or three categories and make it simple. I don't think we have to go to the full Dewey Decimal System or the College Reference Library National, I mean the uh, Library of Congress System. So I don't think we need anything that complex, but it'd be nice if we'd have somebody who could put books back on the shelf in some kind of order so that people could find them. If we're not going to do that, then I suggest we ought to can these things and get them out of here because they're just a desk collector. Probably also too, I mean, if looking at that, I couldn't tell that that was a, a public and open uh, way, you know, a library, if you will. <coughs> if nothing, we might not want to have some signage on them, or at least on the outside of, you know, indicating what, what the purpose of these shelves are. I had no idea just looking at them. Just on top of the shelves. Yeah. You know, exchange yeah. library. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. Exchange library. Yeah. And, you know, we can have people kind of have on the honor system there to go ahead and actually put stuff back in particular places. Um, you know, somebody will volunteer with some, you know, vigor here for probably for a couple of months and if that long and then just kind of let it slide or something like that. So, I mean. So, I got the first thing is we need to have. Uh, my first suggestion was to move the, the shelves together. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. It should be one place or another. Should, everything should be all in the same place. Yeah, and let, if I may, um, Brian was nice enough to meet with me last week to talk about the drainage stuff. And there were a couple of things he wanted to get, as we've missed down here at this table in the back, because he's running back and forth between the drawers. So I said, why don't we put that table up here? That was exercise. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. So that was exercise. <laughs> but anyway, that, that's that's one. But the essence of a library is the ability to sit down and read a book. So what if that table were brought up here? The books were brought <coughs> over here. The staff could use this table without running all the way to the back of the room, and it could be a library. I don't have any heartburn with any of those ideas. Yeah, I, mean, I think what we have to do is to make a specific suggestion to the council and they have to bring it up for, for a vote because they control the, the chambers except for the court. Okay, so uh, one of the things we need to do is to make sure that if we put a table up here and put bookshelves on that wall, which by the way may not be long enough to contain all the bookshelves, <coughs> Along this wall here? Mm -hmm. That wall. Well, if these bookshelves are as tall as they are and can make, be made no shorter, then you would have to do something with all these pictures as well, too. As was done here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But what we, what we do have is just about enough bookshelves to fill the remainder of that, that wall space down to the door. We could go and measure them and see, but I think they would fit. I don't think because of the utility doors at the far end, and the door up at this end, I don't think there's as much space on this wall as there is on the other one. Let's see, but I think there's more space so on is this there, wall. There's a lot of them. Is there a lot, is there, is basically, if we were gonna go ahead <coughs> and get more shelves and more books and stuff, <coughs> there's not enough room in the community room to go ahead and to handle all this? Is that why we're thinking about using this one? Because I, I, quite frankly, the only time I've ever been in there is for voting, and so I, I don't really have a good feel for how big that other room is. Could we put all that stuff in there? Would there be a better place? I'm, I'm not I, really sure. I think a comment that the community room is relatively inaccessible unless there's something scheduled. I don't believe the doors lock or unlock the entire day. Is it? Is it 24? Is it unlocked? Most of the day, the community room door is locked. Okay, and so and this is this is more of a public venue, with the community room being more of a 
of an event public venue, if that, make, if that makes any sense. So in order for somebody to go ahead and enjoy the library, they would have to go find somebody with a key and open it up. I mean, it's, that would be the... Well, exactly. What's, what's available in the community room right now is one with books mm -hmm. and putting these in there is going is, is not going to be helpful it's too much to the access can be too much too much in the way of books right. we have the space here to put the, and maybe either either wall I don't care which wall they're on but I think we do have to coordinate with the court to make sure that anything we propose doesn't interfere with what they're doing uh, does somebody want to do that <clears throat> I can get with uh I, I, would, I, I mean, know. I could I could talk to him on the logistics side to see yeah, if that's possible. Um, you know, uh, the the tables back there is conference room one and two. You know, for city hall, we have meetings and external or internal, and that's what we as staff primarily use them for. I mean, but I mean, we can reshift and accommodate if necessary. Uh, but most of the time, we're meeting again with uh, people that come in, uh, whether they're filling out a permit or uh, have questions about. The permitting process or we use it as staff to have meetings or when council members come in we usually have meetings back there so that's why i say it's conference room one and two so ron you got you have basically i'm gonna call them three bays or three sections over here mm -hmm. over here you have about three and a half sections you could you could you could there's more room over on this side for it will they all fit in one place over on this wall that's my question that's, that's if we're into the minutiae of this is that would from they, the community room mm -hmm. yes yeah i'd assume they would i mean would they all fit on that side uh, it's just a matter of measuring. I get Rick and the guys from Public Works in here to start looking at that and okay. start measuring to see if, if it would accommodate. Okay. Uh, we just have to reach, if we're going to do it over there, we just have to, the mayor's pictures kind of, you know. Put up front here. Mm -hmm. You could. Yeah. You could put the mayor's pictures up here or back there, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to measure, the, you're going to measure the room, Ryan? Yeah, we'll we'll take a look at that based on what's in the community room now and then the existing space in here. Jack, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Would you talk to uh, Judge Judge McCall? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. About what we can do with this, I, I, if it's possible, books on one side and put a table either up here or on that. One would be. That, so that's what that office is right there. Yeah. Ah, okay. That's a compliance man. So, uh, he's, so uh, good. I don't know. He's... So, what I'm saying is, if you have that table away from that office, then we're not going to interfere with what he's doing. We won't have What is this office for right here? Is there, there another one here? It's a closet. It's just a closet. That's just a closet? So ideally, I guess, if we could have the booth cases there, have a table over there, that may make the most sense. I, and there, there was actually, you asked about the closet, there was actually some plans I saw that were done maybe a year ago, I think, that uh, talked about expanding uh, and taking a wall out and taking a wall out just expanding it and moving the court office over here and alleviating space here that way when people come in uh, to the lobby here they just come right through the front door uh, instead of coming to the back door here they come right here and pay tickets or process tickets leaving court coming into court on that day uh, so they move from here to here to there then. yes go ahead yeah I, I wouldn't I didn't know the exact time frame and <laughs> uh, but uh, but it was it was an idea to make it more convenient for people not using mm -hmm. that parking lot. That way, the people who come take a ticket they, they would cycle. <clears throat> so it was a trap limited to eliminate some of the back traffic and make it more efficient for the uh, for the clerk, and then allow more for more space for admin, which made more sense anyway. Yeah, and I saw the plans that would expand that wall and that <laughs> closet. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry. But that's probably not in the cards at this point. My, in time, no, my, no, my fault. Sorry. I asked a question yeah. right there. But <laughs> no, yeah. I looked at that office and I was going, well, yeah, what's, what does this one do? So, so, yeah. so um, to I answer your the, question, it could yeah. be used at some point. Just, yeah. just, just, just to summarize, so we can kind of move forward on this. I guess the game plan would be then uh, go ahead and see if we can move the books over here, mm -hmm. uh, and then 
and move a set a table appropriately, whether they use the back table over there to read or or, or whatever, uh, would be would be the near term plan. We need to develop an idea for for how to make it volunteer or, or functional to where people will utilize it. Yeah. But I guess skip. I guess the thought was if we can move it in here and it is still not utilized, then the next step is okay, we're done with it. We move on. Type of type of. It, it would be my thought. That's kind of my thought too. Okay. I think that right now we don't really have a, <clears throat> a plan to propose that, that covers the just to get in the library together. Right. So I'm suggesting that we we uh, table this pending uh, Mr. Rapley uh, taking measurements. Uh, we need to have somebody talk to Judge McCall to see what's going to impact. I'll, the I'll talk to the judge and see if there's any issue with expansion. And can you get the measurements on the mm -hmm. shelves and we can decide yeah. where to put them then? And uh, the other stuff we'll just hang on to until we come up with with a fully formed and fully baked idea. Okay. So <laughs> I think if we if we can consolidate, um, get some assistance, like Ms. Councilman McCormick said, with volunteers to categorize some of it, and then we can put up the appropriate signage, and then we can kind of monitor uh, the usage, and maybe have a sheet there where people can sign in and sign out books and so we can kind of monitor and um, determine if this, there's some real use to it. Okay. I know a librarian, so my mother-in-law is a librarian at St. Mary's, so yeah. she might want to volunteer. Wonderful. Wouldn't be cool. awesome. A librarian would be ideal. Yeah. You might want to well, check with her before I know, she, you I publicly. Know. <laughs> No, we're going to table this to our next meeting. Is that yes. right? I guess that's, that's, a, that's that, my that, motion. That's a motion. What are you doing on that's a motion. <laughs> I'll second that motion. Um, everybody familiar with the motion? Um, the motion on the table is to table this until the next meeting. Okay, I seconded it. Um, all in favor of tabling this? Okay. I, I take it you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. And by the way, it's a good idea too. To go ahead and let's make that thing make some sense. Uh, okay, item, agenda item number five: discussion of possible action on a Castle Hills Chamber or business forum. This item was put together uh, by Skip, and if, if I may again, uh, if you want to discuss that, it would be great. Thanks. Okay. I'm told that in the past we had what amounted to a Castle Hills Chamber of Commerce that was either done through through. Uh, that group itself or through the uh, what used to be the Castle Hills Homeowners Association now the Castle Hills Community Organization um, we have this came out came out of a discussion with uh, Sherry about the uh, a welcome reception for new residents What's happening is that the cat the Castle Hills community is turning over a large proportion of older residents who are moving out or passing on one way or the other, their property becomes vacant and we're getting new people buying property and moving in. There are, for the first time on my street, three houses for sale. And I see for sale signs all over the place. I know we're getting new people in, but they're not becoming part of our community like we would like them to, and they don't know about the community like we would like them to. So I suggested at one point that we should consider having a welcome reception for these folks. Would something like a quarterly uh, 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 shindig uh, at uh, City Hall with uh, invitations to I meet? don't know. I think, I think what we need to do is take a look at how those numbers add up, whether we want to have uh, every two months, for example, in the spring and through the, through the, through the fall, have, have some kind of a meeting and invite these new residents to the meeting and continue to invite them for the year after they, after they become residents. And then to invite also the, Senate, the, the, the Castle Hills business community through what, what we would hope would be some kind of a, of a chamber of commerce or business forum. The only thing that's, that's available lately has been a business alliance between Castle Hills and Chavano Park, which is about 10 miles that way, and not really a viable match for our business community. If we had a business, a business forum or a chamber of commerce, then we could go through that to invite business people to come to these receptions, put out their little tables and pass out their information and goodies if they're inclined in that direction 
so that the people coming into, into Castle Hills know who our local businesses are and what services or goods or restaurants or whatever they provide so that they can frequent our local businesses. I think it's good for the community. I think it's good for Castle Hills. I think it's good for the business community. And so I'm, the reason that I put in this chamber or business forum is to suggest that, that we may want to go to the Castle Hills community organization and see if they might be interested in partnering up on a chamber of commerce or a business forum. I don't necessarily think it has to be go through the National Chamber of Commerce uh, organization or anything like that, but we need something local where we can get to our businesses and get them involved in the community and get our people involved with our local businesses. That's good for us, it's good for our businesses, and it makes it good for the city. So the, the first thing I mentioned is let's consider doing some kind of business for them. Any thoughts? Can, can we start one as a committee? Like, can we say we want to start a Chamber of Commerce in Castle Hills? No, I, I'm thinking that, that this is something that, that the individual group should, should, should do. I think it, it, what we do is we put the spark out there to the local business, the local uh, community organization, uh, to the women's club, to whomever else we can find who might be interested and see if they're willing to participate in it long term. This is not something that I think this committee should be involved with on a long term kind of basis. We provide the spark, we help get it organized, and then we turn it loose. That's my idea. Do we actually have any kind of uh, business organization here within Castle Hills? I always let them believe no. I'm not aware of one. Of I've, been kind I've, of dried up. I've asked, but I'm not aware of one. May I come? Sure. So, Mark, the, uh, uh, the business alliance that was done between Castle Hills and Chavano Park happened while I was serving on council, and, and uh, that was the beginning. That was actually sponsored by, or it was, it was shepherded by the uh, editor of the local, and he was very active in helping to push that forward. Uh, it, was, it was the start because we knew the turnover, the people were coming in, new businesses were coming in. It was a way to try to make the city more friendly to businesses because of the reputation we had had of being very anti-business we we're trying to we we're trying to mitigate that so we could help you know it, it was it was a win-win for everybody and so that was the push on uh, you needed you needed some more weight you needed more you know people involved that's Chavano Park was was amenable to it and so hence that's where that all that all came from and, cool. and so so that was a sense as as now that has that has kind of passed away it's moved on the 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 uh, uh, a support for that organization has, has dwindled, and, and so that's kind of no longer really viable at this point. And so, but that was that was where it started. That was kind of the first attempt to bring back some life back into our our, our, our city again. And so, are, are there are there any businesses right now that stand out as wanting to do this? I mean, you know, folks, are, you know, small businesses that, that are. Kind of hey. like saying, "Hey, I, I yeah. want to go ahead and right. well to comment. This. Yeah, to comment. I mean, every, I'm sure that I'm sure they are. They're want, they're wanting more business. Uh, the uh, real the realtor that has a real estate company, you know, she's very active, and so you, I'm sure she would jump on board of anything that we could possibly do. Just the because banks. the banks, right? The banks have always been very IBC, all that, and and as they've all they've all BB BB yeah. Ron, yeah, Juan. I'm sure he would. He would want something to happen. So I'm sure. I'm sure we could get the people. The the thought process is is if we're going to make this a Castle Hills uh, pseudo chamber or, or 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 type of chamber of commerce, uh, you know, we need to define really what we're trying to do here. I, I would think, or what we're wanting to happen. Spark. The spark, right? Yeah. As, as Skip was saying, exactly right. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is 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 what organization could we utilize. You know, the Women's Club is always one that's very active in supporting new residents. They used to come, when we moved here, uh, we're probably on the tail end of it, they would bring you a little welcome basket, and you know, there was, they were very proactive in trying to help the people come in. And that's kind of sense that's gone by the wayside. The Castle Hills, Castle Hills Community Organization, which has run, been run by John Kenny, um, and he's been, you know, he's pushed that, that organization for many years. He, now he's unfortunately had to back away because of his job situation. Is, has greatly changed, and I guess the question is, 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 you know, can we get the support and leadership of the Castle Hills Community Organization to help shepherd this? I would think they're a perfect thing because that's really what they're for, 
is in encouraging community development, which includes businesses and, and residents, both. And so how do, we, how do we reach out to them? I mean, I know, I know, the, I know, I know, I know John, I don't, mind, I don't mind reaching out to him and just and running this by him. Maybe we get together and talk. I think that's and, a good idea. I think, I think it'd be a good idea to see if we can talk to mm -hmm. uh, the, the banks, one of the lease, or whomever you think is appropriate. Maybe get to see if you can put together a meeting with three or four of those folks, mm -hmm. and uh, just broach the idea and see what they think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the idea of having a reception on a regular basis, where the community, new new people in the community, get the opportunity to meet old people in the community, mm -hmm. and they get to meet our businesses, and the businesses get to meet the new people. I think that's real helpful. I think that there are a lot of small restaurants, a lot of small businesses around here who don't get much in the way of publicity otherwise. It's an opportunity for them to get better known in our community, among our residents, and for our residents to learn more about our community and our business our community. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. I mean, one of the things that I, I found out when I went to visit a couple of restaurants, like Wahila is here on the corner of Blanco and 410. Uh, the, there's another little restaurant there. What is it called? Um, uh, you know, wild goji. Um, a lot of people don't even know about really how good those restaurants really, really are. Uh, people who've been here living here for like their entire life and like their parents, you know, they've been here for 40 or 50 years, never even go to those places. And they they were new to us. We just kind of said, oh, here's a new restaurant. Let's go try it out. They're fantastic restaurants. Well, he has got great, in my opinion, it's got great food. And uh, wild goji has got some of the best uh, 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 sushi around if you're so uh, you know if you like that kind of stuff in fact the, that nobody really knows about them is kind of surprising to me and, and I, you know I, I would imagine these folks would would welcome an opportunity to have a low-cost way to uh, to show off their skills there, there are a number of other restaurants in the vicinity yeah. like Poppy's right around the corner there is a New York style uh, Italian food place they have absolutely outstanding calzone <laughs> And one of the best marinara sauces you'll ever taste. Uh, and, and that this is the kind of stuff that you know. That I mean, this seems like a natural fit for them. I mean, it's a low cost way for them. In front of businessmen, you got they have to think, hey, is this expensive for me to do? Is it going to be time consuming? Is it going to be effective? And Most so that we, we have to make that for, make that for make that uh, that particular case for them. That yeah, I mean, we can we can be the spark, we can be the kicker. But you know, the, you know, they're going to have to kind of bring that up and, and continue that because this makes sense for me as a business person running a business. Squire, what I was thinking too is, and when you're thinking about a chamber and the chamber's role in, in an economic model in a community is the retention piece. So, what I've seen early in being here in this position that we don't sort of have an inventory of uh, industry. Um, of businesses with contacts in our community, compiling that list for retention purposes. And that's one of the things the chamber plays and that a city our size should be playing a role in as myself as city manager and working on economic development as well as checking with our employers who are here. Um, I recently had a meeting with another councilman um, at Pape Dawson um, for a couple reasons. It was retention purposes, but there was specific question um, to their property that on a project, but it's always good to check in with your, your companies and, and have that inventoried list of current businesses um, and just fundamentals of the economic development role. Can, can I think the question that, for, I'm sorry. I think the question I'm trying to drive at is, is, is who would drive this program? What entity organization? Could we use an existing entity like the Castle Hills Community <coughs> Organization and they'd have a, 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 you know, a, a subcommittee or a committee that would handle this <coughs> Or do we look at forming a complete separate entity or, or making a recommendation? I mean, I think this all kind of needs to be brought out to council. Well, well I, I think from think my that, standpoint, I mean, we should have. needs to go to council before we before yeah. we rush off with it. But mm -hmm. I think that that an organization that includes maybe some of the some of the larger businesses in town, like the banks or real estate company or whomever, and the, the uh, community organization mm -hmm. together would be the way to do it. My thought. Right. You know, I, I, my my guess would be, and, and this is, you know, just from, you know, just kind of jumping in this and not really thinking it through completely. But, you know, for a for a business to join like a, a Castle Hills business organization, there there has to be it, it's 
it's different from like joining the Castle Hills community organization. I'm doing it because I live here and I want quality of life and that sort of thing, which is very different from, not maybe very different, but there, it's, it's different from, you know, from a business perspective, which is basically, um, I, I'm an employer, I have to pay my employees, I have to pay my, my overhead, I have to make sure I get a profit. How, how, how is that gonna go ahead and make sure, uh, how, how does this organization help me you know, maintain that? I mean, that, and that's, I think for them, in, in many cases, it's going to be, how does it help me? And what, 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 will, it, what will it do for me? Understand will will so. it be worth my time to go ahead and spend it? Um, that's and and, and, that, and that, that's we we should make it really simple and easy for them to be successful in it. Uh, well, joining the Castle Hills community organization uh, is something that a business can do. Mm -hmm. it, it joining that is a heck of a lot cheaper than any chamber of commerce in town. I don't care which one you're talking about. You're talking about hundreds of dollars a year because I've been there. Uh, so. I'm thinking that, that they can well join the community organization because even though it seems to be, it was focused originally on homeowners, it's now a community organization and businesses are certainly part of the community. Sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna correct you if I may. What? The community organization was focused on residents, not homeowners. Well, we, we, it, we were it, trying to, we were trying to when, we, when, the, when, the, when it was renamed, because it was the homeowners association originally, or the, or the, and, and we were like, that's what I'm telling yeah, you. We, originally, we it was a homeowners. Yeah, way back when, right? Way back right, when. Right. No, that's the name has that changed, right. and so, but now that it is a community organization, businesses are certainly part of the community, and they don't have to be a homeowner to be a member. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and, that, and that's the whole point. That was the reason we changed it, was to was to open it up and make yeah. it make it make it support the community. And so, <coughs> so one of the things I was going to say is. It, we should probably at the city, obviously, that's what I've identified as having that list and inventorying our businesses. Again, our top employers, contacts, those kind of things. Role, yeah. Right? I mean, we have a well, it, it's, of, and, it's, and it's a it's someone. accumulation of things we could put together to have one master list of those. And then um, we're working on upgrading our, our city website. And so ideally, I'd like to have some area of economic development that, that highlights, again, um, our businesses, um, why you'd want to move your business or grow here in Castle Hills from that standpoint. So, I mean, just really more of an economic development area to highlight those employers. So, huh? as a, so are you saying that you, you can put together a list like that? I are think, you, yes. Work, are you working on well, it? Well, we kind of had it started already kind of putting something together, but we can put together, a, 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 again, an inventory list of all businesses here with contacts and, you know, and, and group them by, you know, the top employers or the number of employers, again, either by industry or certain categories like that. Is it something that the city could do, uh, for example, to send out a mailer to our list of business entities who do business in Castle Hills and invite them to participate in a business forum or something of that sort, even though the city doesn't own it, the homeowners, the, the, the community organization slash primary businesses in town would be the ones who would be running it. That's something we could do with, could the city do something like that? I don't see why not. I mean, from our standpoint as a city, we should be um, on a quarterly basis or every six months checking in with, with some of the companies here in Castle Hills um, to see if they need anything from the city or how they can partner for the city. Good idea. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's the element that Again, chambers play for retention purposes in a community uh, to kind of check in, and and um, the chamber's role is to grab the city staff and say, we need to have a meeting because this company is looking to grow in your community, and what can the city provide them, whether it's an incentive or some type of amenity that helps them grow and stay in your community. Okay. Would so. it be inappropriate for the city website to link to some? mechanism where you know you're I, i'm a um i'm a resident and i would like to go ahead and find a great mexican restaurant so i go to the to the uh, to, to the to the city website and click on mexican restaurant and i get a list of them that pay city tax no no i've seen in, in different cities where they have certain businesses that you can highlight um, informational purposes a month or something like something that. along those lines but uh depending the size of the city in my previous cities um, it was more geared towards um, putting like your top 10 employers and listing those from industry purposes uh, from that standpoint to spotlight in case 
a company was looking to relocate in your community, you wanted to see that there was a comparable targeted industry in that area. Um, Ron, may I ask a question on that? I mean, our website has been revamped a couple different times, and it's way better than, way way better than it used to be. Well, we're due. However, it's still it's still deficient in some things for promoting the city per se. In that, in, in well, that one of my plans, and again, it's, it's staff time, um, was we, we're eligible for a free upgrade, and, and so we want to be able to kind of. Um, have a better illustration when you open up more information, calendar, events, um, better information about the community. And again, uh, Mr. Sanderson, you know, you can put a, a economic development spotlight in other cities I've worked in that, that showcase those kind of things okay. so uh, from that standpoint. But doing that, yeah, I mean, my plan was we're, we're going to get with some of the department heads and we kind of sit there all day and go through the current website to find out what kind of amenities we'd want to see and get that to Civic Plus who uh, do those upgrades and tell them here's what we'd like to see. And part of that is kind of looking at some other cities to see how we'd like our website to look as well. Okay. Um, can, uh, can we kind of put a point to, to this some way? Sorry. Uh, right. okay. What we have is the opportunity for you to put together a list of businesses. Mm -hmm. but John, you mentioned that you can get in touch with uh, Juan Solis and some of these other folks. and, and Yeah, I'll talk, I can talk with the community organization and, uh, and maybe Jack and I can talk with Juan Jack there. Yeah. And so. And, and so, but yeah, I, I, I'd like to broach that topic with them to see their thoughts on it, yeah. see if they want to participate in it. And so absolutely, be more than glad to. Okay, so can we uh, table this again with Mr. with Mr. Rapley looking into the number of businesses in town and you and, and Mr. Joyce looking into contacting the, the community organization and larger businesses. Can I, can I make a recommendation? Sure. I say we don't table it. I think we made some progress here. Okay. And I think we have another agenda item next month. And, okay. And uh, we're, we already have our action plan that we're determining here at this point. Is that okay? Well, it's the same thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next step is what I'm, I want to, okay. I want to make progress. So, okay. I'll have to side with John. John sounds more positive. It sounds like the same thing, but his sounds yeah. more, <laughs> it sounds more positive. Okay. <laughs> I, I agree with that. Let's go with what John said. I move, I move whatever. Sorry for agreeing with him, but I mean, it's I just... move whatever he said. Anybody yeah. second? <laughs> second? Second. All in favor. Okay. Okay. All All right. Right. Yeah. Skip, thank you. Thank you for, for uh, allowing me that. All right. Brian, if you could, though, when you have that list, um, if you could reach out to me independently or, or through, the, through the committee, it doesn't matter. I'd like to present that to the Castle Hills Community Organization also. Let me see how this will work out for me. Not a problem. Okay, and great, we'll, thank you. We'll try our best to get it, move it up the list on the to-do list on things. Okay. Um, agenda item number six, uh, we did table that for next month, so we'll move on beyond that. Uh, agenda item number seven. Uh, community assistant and commission edification for new of new items for discussion at the next meeting. Uh, let's go ahead and, and, and start on where we're at. We were kind of uh, assigned our, our various uh, projects. Uh, if I may, uh, Bernard, do you mind do you mind starting? Because you were you were focused on the parks. Yes, that's okay. If you want to just briefly touch on that, and then I mean I know we have another meeting here coming up, and maybe you can get into, into the details at that point, but. Yes, uh, I wanted to talk more about getting the community out and about, and uh, parks is one of the ways we can do that, and we can interact with each other, and it builds a stronger community, and uh, that's my goal, to get people out and talk to each other. And, uh, uh, have you, is there any specifics that have happened uh, that... Uh that are worth mentioning at this point, or do we want to? Just um, the PTA uh, just recently gave another thousand dollars for the playground equipment, so we're up to thirteen thousand um, for extra playground equipment at the Commons, so exercise equipment and a uh, special needs swing uh, for the swing set. So, it's nice. Nice. All right, Very good. Bernard. Thank, thank good you. Upgrade. And, and um, Go I'm calling back the gentleman from NAISD, um, the construction manager on the sidewalk. So oh, nice. Um, so we're we're moving that forward. So, do you mind commenting on? Is he has he responded at all on that? I mean, we need sidewalks around that school. It's oh, I know. We're, we're we're working on it and kind of do it in phases. But uh, I've got to call him back on Monday to talk about the details. And more more likely, it'll just be an agreement from the city with NISD and we in kind the money and then they run with it because they have their own construction crew they can scope it out and 
bid it and we don't have to get involved and they go in and construct the sidewalks. All right, thank you, Ryan. Uh, Mark. So um, I don't remember actually having anything in particular, but other than the, the traffic stuff that's, um, you know, the, that I spoke of, that was kind of my, my, uh, my immediate passion right there was the, the four-way stop signs up and down uh, Buckaroo. Uh, um, I took to heart the, um, uh, the police chief's recommendation that we do not have any kind of speed bumps, although you know, in some ways I, I, you know, I'm conflicted on that particular point right there. Um, you know, anything to go ahead and get people to to pay attention, to slow down, lowering lowering speed limits potentially, and that sort of thing. I'm not taking any action on that. Um, uh, I'm still not sure exactly what I need to do or what direction I need to go to make that happen. Do I need to take a you know a piece of paper and get people's names down and and you know requesting it or what I call it a poll or whatever uh, in the neighborhood or what? So. You know, th these are sort of the sort of things that that, uh, that concern me. You know, very parochial concern. You know, keeping the kids from getting squashed. We're, as Clyde and other folks have pointed out, we're getting more families, more young folks moving in here. Um, you know, having a little more aggressive uh, 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 mechanism here to keep folks, you know, slowing down and, and potentially not cutting through our neighborhoods to go from one major road to another. Those are the things that are of concern to me. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll need some guidance here on what the best way to go ahead and go about accomplishing some of those. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, Jack? Okay, uh, my topic is drainage. So I spent the last couple of weeks doing a little bit of data gathering and with a lot of help from Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. He provided me a copy of the master drainage plan here for the city, which I reviewed and sat down with Ryan to try to understand some of the plans and some of the other information. Um, but he, Ryan, has had discussions with the city of San Antonio regarding some of the issues in here because some of this relates to San Antonio. Some of this drainage comes from above, so to speak. And so he's begun <laughs> <laughs> discussions on that. Um, and also there's a, there's a potential partnership uh, with San Antonio because they have, a, have another bond coming up in 2022. This current bond is working down there in McCullough and Oblate with some culverts and stuff working on the downstream. Apparently they're gonna work their way up. So there might be some potential there. But anyway, this report details some potential fixes after identifying the problems it identifies some fixes and puts a number to it. And uh, the, the 2015 estimate is approximately seven million bucks to fix the drainage issues in two watersheds that have the issues. Um, current estimate, Ryan thinks that that's probably, you know, it's a 2015 report, so it's old and it's kind of being revised as time goes on, so it's probably nine or 10 million now. And so it, it, it's my view that, you know, given those numbers, it's, we're probably looking at a long-term or longer-term solution. This is not something we can do in the next year or two. Um, but one thing I didn't realize is that the city has funds for drainage and continually puts money aside for drainage and, um, from a variety of sources, including taxes and billboard revenue. 20% uh, of the billboard revenue, go, revenue goes to streets and 80% to drainage, which is news to me. So the, uh, the 218, 2018 balance of funds for drainage is, is something on the order of $888,000 that's just kind of sitting there and has potential to be used. Uh, the projected balance, and Ryan's working on the CIP, the projected balance for 2019 is over a million dollars. Plus, there's another supplemental street and drainage fund that has six or seven hundred thousand dollars in it now. So this, this fund, the city has. I think the point I'm trying to make is the city itself has some funds for drainage, and we could potentially, if we're patient enough, um, continue to accumulate money, assuming we can beat the rate of inflation, and and do it ourselves. But it's going to take some time. Um, the other option, as I mentioned earlier, was the potential maybe to partner with San Antonio, and Ryan has begun those discussions and invited me to them whenever the next discussion is, which I will be happy to, to attend. There's also the, the Bear Watershed Management Partners, of which the city and 19 other suburban cities are a part of, 
And there may be some potential there, although that's, I mean, you talk about long term, that's probably really long term with those guys. That, but that's the group where we as a, as a city and the regional partnership um, bring forward a drainage problem to them mm -hmm. to, to help, um, whether they can help us uh, obtain funds through the county or the uh, federal. But that's kind of the conduit uh, for all the cities regionally to address drainage problems. Right. And I attend those meetings because they're uh, every two months. Okay. So, but to, when you when you discuss the the watershed, so just in sense, watershed three has uh, three projects, and watershed two has five projects. And uh, as we did with the street side of the CIP in phase one, phase two will be drainage, and it'll be prioritized with a new price tag, and show the magnitude needed, like the streets did, to say. Um, here's what's going to be needed, even though we have a million dollar drainage council at some point uh, is going to have to decide a mechanism to finance the rest. So at least it gives you a total tab. But anyway, um, Skip has uh, suggested that I talk to uh, Councilman Gregory, who apparently is kind of a council person who knows is best interested and most knowledgeable about this topic, so I'll do that. So anyway, that, that's kind of where we are. I guess we'll head <coughs> toward um, making some other suggestions and how to get all this taken care of. But As I mentioned to you, one of the good things in, in speaking to Councilman Gregory, we had already identified uh, within that watershed three, the three projects, and then the third one being the outfall has already had a new price tag to it. So we actually know how much it's gonna cost right now to do that. And then the other phase, Glen Tower up to Carrollwood was the other project. And then Carrollwood up to Lock Hill Selma is the third um, phase of that project. And again, that's probably the most expensive according to our engineers as far as a price tag. Yeah, okay. But again, if we can work with the city of San Antonio up on Lock Hill Selma some way, That'll control the volume of water coming down Carrollwood, Mr. Right. Cormac Street, and so again, being a part of that group helps um, pave the way to eventually, and hopefully, again, probably the best way is partnering with the City of San Antonio to do drainage improvements along Lock Hill on each side um, for their future bond being 2022. At least if we can get in the pipeline, get a project together, and get one developed and get it on their radar when they do put the bond committee again for 2022, it's on their uh, review plan and process to partner. Of course, it's not, we're gonna have to have the, the funds or partnering with them, but at least if we have that, it shows that we can partner and, and move forward. But that'll control the volume down Carrollwood uh, to Banyan and to the outfall. Anyway, that's the story. Right. Thank you. <laughs> just, a, just a side point. We've been a member of the Bear Watershed program for the last four or five years. I know that uh, Mr. Trevino, when he was on council, was, was active in that and had a, a, a whole long list of wonderful contacts. The only thing is that over time, we haven't seen any, any productivity from that participation. And so uh, I'm inclined not to want to wait until we have financing for the whole project or until we have a long-term plan that involves every possible solution to do any of the work. We have in front of us some solutions that we know now are necessary and will be necessary regardless of what happens to the other part of the project. So I'm, I'm, my, my feeling is that we ought to press on and get done what we can get done while we wait for something to happen on the San Antonio side, which I think will be a long wait. I don't plan to hold my breath. Now, how can we do that? How can we do what? Uh, get on with the small things. Well, can uh, we do as I know Mr. Gregory has four items that he wants to put on a special meeting agenda. Uh, those items, I think, are more, more thoroughly described in the uh, support documentation attached to this, the, the packet for the coming council meeting. And I think he'll, he'll be obligated to discuss those, those matters at the council meeting. But that's uh, what happens in the council meeting kind of beyond the scope of what we're going to be able to do here. All we can do is to look for solutions that we can address as a project. 
one at a time. It's kind of like, you know, the thing was saying, how, how do you eat an elephant? We've got an $11 million bill we can't pay. How do we eat the elephant? One bite at a time. We take one small bite at a time and get it done that way. Do we, do we have an acknowledged uh, um, low cost, high benefit solution on any of these four here? Something that would be I mean, low cost is something that we can pay for ourselves with the current funds that we have? The, there were some projects that were done, specifically one on Manton, uh, a very small project. It, I don't know why it, it did not move forward, but that project does need to move forward because we can do that within the city and it can help a lot of the residents. It can help four or five residents or six residents up there. And, uh, and that's one that was, that was percolating uh, when I was involved and it was at the be more of the beginning stages of it. Um, but to, to say, can we do stuff downstream, uh, i.e. Banyan, uh, those areas, we can, obviously we can. Uh, the problem is, is, is the vent that we can design and engineer for will in no way address the events that those areas are seeing. We can handle maybe a 10 year event, best case scenario. Well, they're getting <clears throat> regularly 50, 100 year event because of the way the water's being channeled, that storm water's being channeled. And we can in no way, no matter what we do, no matter how we engineer it, there's no way we can handle those kind of events. There's absolutely not possible. The Banyan outfall is, is 10 years. That's what they had yeah. and that's indicated. the best again that's the best they can do that's the and that's and that is not going to take care of any of the water that's, and that's and that's the issue with us trying to address it internally and skip and I'm sorry but I, I have an idea of, of this whole thing because I looked into it uh, way too many times um, the best we can do internally is a 10-year event and there's no event I bet you the event yesterday was probably concentrated as more as probably a, a, if you run the numbers I bet you would be more of a 10-year event what hit us yesterday even and, and so how did those residents do there? Any report of flooding? Their own All the time. Oh, oh my God, it's terrible. Yeah. These, so, poor, these poor residents. It's terrible. To, um, to answer, Skip sees it. I mean, he, he, has, he, has, he has floods in front of his house every time. Yeah, Mr. Every Mr. Time Sanderson's. Street, so, yeah. I have seen three and four feet of water in my street. Uh, I, I don't know how much we can encourage. I mean, these, these small, I mean, if 10 years is what we got, then, you know, let, let's, let's do the 10 years. Well, the thing is that even the 10-year projects that we're talking about would still price out, according to Mr. Rapley, somewhere around $11 million, maybe 14. I don't know. But we, the point is we can't do all of it at once. There are some small projects that are small investment, higher return, like, for example, the water discharge over, off of, uh, over across Fox Hall, on the, on the north side of Fox Hall. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of water that comes down there, but it's all channeled through non-concrete swales and burn. And this could be terraced or uh, controlled by using a simple grader to change the, the slope or the arrangement of some of the berms and some of the swale that direct that water. There is an outfall on the back side of, of Fox Hall that comes across the back of some of those properties and runs down a drain across that little little paved road that across runs. Yeah, I don't know what the, what the street is, but it's, it goes it goes west from Fox Hall, and it, it's supposed it dead ends into private roads. Mm -hmm. That's Ibiscus. Okay, right? that's Ibiscus. Yeah. There's a little drain across from, Ibiscus that has no no uh, culverts under it. Mm -hmm. And so the water flows all across the top of the road. And on the other side of Fox Hall, the water comes down through a number of, of swales. These are shallow uh, terrace ditches, essentially, that, are, that control the water flow. Those can be modified somewhat by, sim by simply using a, a bobcat and a grader to, to change the, the depth or slope of the swales and the direction of some of the swales. Uh, that could be done on a fairly low budget. No, that, that's something we could actually do ourselves, maybe by renting the equipment on or, or something along that line. But one of the one of the things you got to think about was what Skip is bringing up is is the old standby is is channel the water and get it out of here, and and we've 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 done that unsuccessfully for 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 generations in our in our community. The new philosophy is rip rap, slow it down allow some time for, for absorption. And that's actually, since that area is relatively pervious, relatively pervious, that's actually a great area to see about applying some of the, some of the new 
uh, mentality or thought process is to try to get most of that, try to get as much water as you can to be retained and absorbed into the into the uh, into the ground and and slow down a little of the runoff and and so which is what you know the fight the thing you got is because it's channeled and runs right right across your your, your front yeah which is unfortunate and, and so but I think if, if we're gonna look at that look at that uh, you know because he's talking about you know uh, uh, Quint and Janice home I know I know Quentin went through and he terraced it and he tried to he's trying to see he's done a pretty good in, job of yeah, directing water around, around his, his place property. and everything and it comes across in front and there was a bridge that we got we built years ago so they could get in their house and 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 so a lot of things have happened to to help uh, but I think we need to look at it from the perspective of what we can do and it's a perfect project actually is to see what we can do to not necessarily channel it but to slow it down absorb it maybe detain a little bit of it and then allow the rest to run off and, and so just just a thought process yeah. well I've, I've looked at it, I've looked at it when yeah. I've looked at it when the water was running across it and I've, I've driven over there when the rain was coming down in torrents and looked at it and I don't see a place to slow it down is the problem right. and That's there's hard. no place to put a, a, a control pond you know a, a, any place over there that I can see so what we need to do is to kind of channel the flow that we have and put it where it's not going to be harmful. Uh, at least that's the way it seems to me. Now, there may be some places where you could put that, uh, put in. Talk to LP applied to what will the area, the Carroll Wood and uh, was it North? Not anymore. Hey, not, not not anymore. anymore. Ryan, are these uh, issues part of any of the reports that, that you've seen? I don't remember them in here. Well, the Carroll Wood down to Banyan well, is part of the sure. master shed. <laughs> And then in the other one, that actually from, uh, it's part of the other watershed that extends okay. all the way down to West Avenue. So okay. Mimosa so it's West, it's yeah, it's part of there. Okay. So again, there's five projects in watershed two. And so it's a matter of just breaking those out and identifying the new price tag to them. Yeah. And of course, three projects within watershed number three. So, right. and, and just to answer Mr. Sanderson's question earlier about addressing, I don't want to steal Councilman Gregory's thunder because on the agenda Tuesday night is a, is a request to hold a special meeting, but I sat down with him and we've kind of planned out how this might look going into next month with holding this special meeting to identify four drainage areas, having our on-demand engineers come and meet with council, and then coming back at some point after council's review, uh, the plans, the price tag, and then making a decision on some of those drainage projects. I, I disagree. I don't think anybody can steal his thunder. I don't think it's yeah. possible. Well, I'm just, th this is part of the discussion I have with him and I'm not going yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I think that to trying to find the best bang for the buck, I mean, and, and start doing it now. And, and then, you know, if we can do simple things to go ahead and maybe we might not be able to alleviate all the pain for these folks that are up there, but can we alleviate, can we, instead of it four feet, can we make it six inches? That, that would perhaps not be like a, an official like fix or anything like that, but it would be certainly much easier to manage. Well, well when you look at Watershed 2, there's five projects. So you, at some point, you have to figure out what is the priority for the bang for the buck. And, you know, Wisteria has a, a large culvert where the water comes through, down through Mimosa. Well, you look, and that just has zero capacity for volume of water coming through there. So there's going to have to be an adjustment through there like Mr. Squire mentioned, some riprap maybe to control some of that and then have the water continue down. And then at the exit, West Avenue is going to be dressed at some point. So it's just a matter of within those five projects, what's the best bang for our buck to address the drainage issue right now for residents? One of the, if, I, if I may kind of pull this back in a bit, okay. you know, the, the, the purview yeah. here is, is trying, to, trying to move some of these things to the MPO. Uh, and, and drainage is one that, 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 that Jack has hit on. I mean, there's it's it's a, it's a great fit for the MPO since we're looking more regionally uh, in, in regards to that. I mean, we were looking at our city, but regionally too. Um, the situation between us and San Antonio, that's a that's a perfect MPO thing, and that's a that's a that's also a, you know a bare region, uh, regional watershed management concern, and, and and so you know it's a long term process. But you're also talking tens and tens of millions of dollars to to help address that for that water coming into our city. So the reason I'm going off on this is is of what we're kind of throwing out here today, is there anything that we could move forward, or any thoughts of things that maybe we could move forward to the MPO that, that they would be able to take on? And that's, or that would make us some sense. And, and I have more reasoning here I'll tell in a minute, but I just want to throw that out there. So 
So what the, one of the things that it is, sounds like one of the things we want to do is we want to get in the process of creating a, you know, a, a proposal and have a, um, and have a, um, a boilerplate proposal that has been successful in the past and, and potentially kind of crib it from that, if you will. And uh, that would be nice to have that and have that as kind of a starting point and, and find a couple of these projects right here that we think that we just can't handle and I, I, whatever criteria that, that is, that is, uh, that is uh, you know, useful to go ahead and, and apply to, the, to these particular projects here. Right, and, oh. and, and, I'm, and I'm focused right now on drainage. And, and yeah, uh, that's, yeah. that's going to look more. Keeping in mind with the MPO that they will only fund up to 15% of the cost of a project when drainage is a part of that project. So we need a larger project. If we're going to get drainage money out of the MPO, we need a larger street project or something that need that 15% of which can be drainage. Mm -hmm. that, that's where the, the money is possible. So um, you know, of all of the street projects we're thinking about, are there any really big street projects that might impact. Well, there's no, I don't think there's any street projects up there. Well, there Lost Hill is. There's the Fairwood, which is a perfect one. And uh, that's Well, it's not a project that the MPO would take on because it's not one of their streets. Right. Uh, Lock Hill, maybe, but the two streets in, in Castle Hills that are MPO projects would be, I think, West Avenue. Blanco and uh, Lemonwood yeah. and Honeysuckle. Yeah, and it, it might, that, that, that may you, You'd have to tie Lock Hill to, to either West. Well, you'd have to tie Lock Hill to either West or Blanco. Yeah, and, but I mean, that's kind of a stretch, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, I think on the drainage side, if we had a large, yeah, we, we need a large street project to attach the drainage to. Does it, does this 15% right here, does it have to be in support of that specific street project? Well, I don't, I got that impression, Mark, but whether or not it does, you know, I, we might be pushing it if we pull it out and say, well, we got this street over here, and by the way, we got some drainage over here. Yeah, I think, I think that they probably do have to be tied to the street project that, that is under the purview of the MPO. Uh, the only thing I can suggest, Jack, is that we might look at the plans concerning the streets in Castle Hills to see if we could tack on a drainage project to say if there were if there were a work project to do something on West Avenue or Blanco or something like that, for example, we might be able to tie in a drainage project with one of those. Work with military and block though. Is there anything there that we would uh, be able to take a look at? I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with that intersection. It might be possible. I mean, the water that flows down through North Manton is crossing Northwest Military um, down through the next watershed through those five projects. So it may be something to evaluate. I, I don't to see why we couldn't argue that, that a drainage project uh, that impacts Northwest Military at some place upstream would still be a viable drainage project to attach to a Northwest Military project. Logically connected with, with reasonable engineering assertions, sure, certainly we, we'd be able to make a, a point there, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, I'll, I'll continue to look at that. Um, I also, if I may, one more comment. I was, as I looked through this report, I was sort of struck, and John mentioned it a few moments ago, the idea that the maximum that the current outfall can take is a 10-year event. And so we're spending 9, 10, 11, whatever that number is, to get us to a 10-year event. And so I guess maybe the question I want to know and hear you guys' opinion is should we look toward a higher event and work with the city on some future project on getting the drainage that goes down military under 410 to be a 50-year event your question, John, rather than 10-year, which is, you know, it, it's not useless, but it's, it, you know, if we can get our streets up to 10 years, it's going to be better than it is now. But, you know, 50-year, would that would be something. That would be an accomplishment if we can really take care of a 50-year storm or a 100-year storm. Is well, particularly in view of the fact that in the past 20 years, we've had three or four 50-year events. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's the larger project, the longer term thing that we need to look at is converting 
the downstream stuff to 50 year, I don't know what they're doing. I'm not sure what they're designing to on the McCullough thing down there. If it's 50 or 20 or 10 or what. Yeah, I, I just remember my own experience, you know, being flooded out when I lived in Houston and speaking with, I keep on forgetting his name, I think you know him as well too, the guy that had his house flooded like five different times and, um, um, and uh, he, he ran for oh, oh, uh, Scott, a man. Uh, Scott. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is it Scott? Anyway, anyway um, yeah, the, uh, I, 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 I just remember, you know, you know, thinking about those folks right there and the frustration and, uh, that, that happens there. And it's like, well, you know, is it better for us to go ahead and relieve the pain that is closest to us as opposed to, you know, some pain that's, that's further away? And, and, and mm -hmm. I, I, I'm kind of struggling about, you know, which one, which, which pain is better to go ahead and, and, and to cure. And, and you know, my, my, my initial knee-jerk reaction is let's cure the pain that's closest to us and, 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 that, and, and try to manage that the best. I, I, I don't know. Sure, maybe I, do both. Yeah, yeah but the, the thing is, like, like in medicine, there are no perfect cures. There's some things you can't cure, and all you can do is treat the symptoms. Uh, but just because you don't have a perfect cure is no reason not to treat the patient. Right. I agree. Yeah. So how about, this is just a suggestion. I mean, because like if you, we can't go above a 10-year event or the, the rate of like the investment you put in, the residents will never be able to pay for that. So, or it'll take 200 years to pay for it. So what can we do is, would it be viable to help the residents that are affected by the flooding, if that house actually gets flooded, would, would it be advantageous to say, well, here's $300,000, we, we want you to rebuild your house, you know, two foot higher. And would that help, would that be cheaper and more viable for our city to go that route? Or buy them out and, and right. park. It, and yeah, say, I, I if, if someone rebuilds here, they have to build way above standard. Well, I, there are some things you can do without having to have on stilts. I think the actual cost of that would probably wind up being more expensive than raising the place and building a new house on it. So uh, my thought is, like I said, what we need to do is we do it one bite at a time. We look at those projects that will give us an immediate impact. One of the problems with these small projects is that they're gonna impact four or five houses maybe. Right, 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 right. And they may not impact the whole thing. I've been in this, in my house for 20 years. I have not once complained about the drainage on the property. I have not once been down to City Hall or talked to anybody on council about the drainage issue. Mm -hmm. I can live with it. I got big, a couple of bigger vehicles that can get through most of the water when it's less than a foot deep. Mm -hmm. But when it gets over a foot or two feet or three feet or four feet deep in my street, I can't get in or out. Only thing is that doesn't usually last more than 10 or 15, 20, 30 minutes maybe. Mm -hmm. right. So I can live with that. But these people who are having their houses flooded can't live with it. Right, right. And we need to address that even though it doesn't address the whole city. We get this problem, if we can solve this problem, let's solve it. Mm -hmm. If we can solve the next problem, let's go on to that. I agree. But we have, we have some money, we need to go ahead and implement what treatments we can as soon as we can, rather than wait until we have the whole thing funded. So the money that we currently have in these, from these various sources and stuff, I don't know, it sounds like we have a couple million dollars or something, is there limitations on what we can do? Can we buy a person's home and say, uh, uh, or is it strictly for structural or mechanical changes in the in the in the environment that surrounds the house if we can if we can resolve you to the extent that the flooding of over on Manton, for example is is reduced substantially then i think that's probably about what we're going to be able to do uh, there there's going to be resistance to buying houses and putting them up on on uh, make, making pocket parks out of them because it takes those houses off the tax rolls Anything we do in that way, it takes it off the tax rolls, cuts our income, cuts our revenue, and then we've got to maintain that piece of property, so we've got expenses in addition to it. So there's gonna be some resistance to taking property off the tax rolls and, and trying to solve our problem by 
by throwing those people out of their houses or inviting them to leave or, or, or something of that sort, or even condemning or, it. Or at least an offer. I mean, I, yeah. I, we don't have to I think that's, to I take think it. that's possible. I think a lot can be done to resolve the issues substantially by simply addressing the water problem. And how about, can, is, is there a way the city can help the residents on their property channel water differently? Uh, can, can the city use funds to help them? Not, not on private property. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. No, the city can't okay. use. Yeah. There are things that probably individual homeowners could do, like right. uh, to build a berm to channel water away from the house uh, or to build a, a swale a low place to channel the water into the drainage channel. And, and uh, over on Manton probably is an example of that. It would be possible to build a, a sandbag wall around the, the house substantially or most of the yard and to raise a little burn there to prevent water flow into, into the property. And that would be fairly inexpensive to do. How effective it is is the question. Right. And I don't know the answer to that. But I think we could address the water flow across Manton. I think we've we've done several several iterations of that deal, and I've talked to Jack and I've talked to Douglas about it at different times. That to raise that piece of road right by Mr. Wrigley's house, where that drainage channel is, to put culverts underneath it and to drain that water off more rapidly, rather than forcing it to rise across the top of the road and then to invade the properties on the uh, west end of that particular drainage problem. I think if we can get that water flow uh, underneath the street into the drainage channel quickly, I think it would solve probably 80 or 90 percent of that problem, uh, unless we get the 100-year event or the 50-year event or whatever. But most of that drainage is water that has to come up over the road to get into the drainage channel. If we raise the road a little bit, put culverts underneath it, I think it'll solve a lot of that problem. It sounds relatively inexpensive as far as the... It's about a $300,000 project. That, uh, we saw one up in Chavano Park that's virtually identical to this kind of thing that they did for $300,000. The, the, the design was complete for um, to lower the road to allow the water, so we'd have to just revise that design to raise and put the culvert underneath um, from that standpoint. And um, to answer your question, Jack, about the revenue funds, um, we'll continue to have um, the, the drainage fund comprised of, of the, you know, when you pay your SAWS bill, you pay a portion of that, and then the digital billboards, which is the 80%, um, those are long-term um, contracts with the city. Uh, we went out for proposals for digital billboards, so we're evaluating a couple sites for additional revenue long-term to add to that drainage fund. Um, so that's pretty positive that we'll have that revenue at some point infused Great. into the drainage fund to do more projects. And, um, and you know, when you start talking about buying out homes, I've, I've seen it in other communities re regarding where FEMA has come in uh, from that standpoint, um, which so that's possible based on a certain catastrophic rainfall. And so. Yeah, I mean, I, I realize there'd be some loss to the city right there. We'd have to try to make it up some other way. Well, that's why I say we could just give them you can rebuild on it. You just have to rebuild higher. It's it depends so, if they. Uh, it's, if not they a, it's not in a flood zone. Yeah. If and they, so we, there's, there's there's nothing that compels them anybody to rebuild higher on there now. If it's in a federal flood zone. Yeah. The FEMA maps don't extend it anywhere in Castle Hills, unfortunately. Even the revised maps don't extend it to Castle if Hills. If FEMA if FEMA bought out a property, uh, they would redraw the lines to say that you couldn't build there uh, down the future, which which hurts um, obviously right, from right, doing right, stuff. Right. So. Right. 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 <laughs> I had to deal with that in Del Rio where yeah. uh, that happened and you couldn't build on it. So yeah, the yeah. city had to maintain these empty <laughs> lots. So it was a cost of the city. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah, I, so. I, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, one, one, thing to, uh, one thing to comment on in regards to Manton is uh, the reason that it was, the cost was significantly less to go and just lower Manton a little bit um, in that area than it was to go ahead and build it up. And the reason that, that that method was chosen is because you don't you don't limit ingress and egress. Even if you lower it, you can get out either on Northwest Military or you can get out on, uh, on uh, what is it, Lock Hill Selma. And so it was a very inexpensive solution. It was like seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 to go ahead and do it. And it would get the water to stay in the channel, per se, 
and uh, and so it was it was ready to move on and then and then it just it didn't I, again I don't know why it didn't move on but that's why it was done like that was to make because it was so inexpensive to do just move on and get done so back back when we looked at it so the design is done and already completed. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> moving right along huh? this one Jack can you and hey. I meet and take a, take a that'd be great Skip sure this meeting. Skip, thank you on that. Now we got one more item on this one. I'd like to, if Skip, if you want to do this very briefly, I'll, I'll poke around on the, uh, on okay. the uh, thing if you want uh, to. But this is this is uh, concerning West Avenue uh, and 410 intersection, and Skip's put a lot of effort into this, and so I'd like to hear if you all. I'd like to hear what he has to say, and this is one that, that if I may, and I'll let, let's take it from here. Okay. Um, but this is one I think would have a quick and a significant impact on our city to address the issues. With the uh, uh, with the backup of the traffic and help also help Gladiola, and also also more importantly is is, is December twelfth is when things open up for this next round at the MPO, and so this is something that we may be able to move forward with. And so Skip, take it here. I sent around to everybody earlier this week copies of the congestion management program from the uh, MPO and uh, their their uh, educational. Uh, briefing on that same subject and they should be in your email they're, they're PDF files that you can look at they're also available on the MPO website for those of you that don't know the MPO website is www.alamoareampo.org and when you get on there you will see a, a uh, an MPO heading like is up in the upper left hand corner of this little map and a list of buttons across where that blue line is there'll be a white line with a, a list of of topics it'll be home then on the far right there will be planning there it is library and so forth if you look under planning you will see the geographic information system which is down at the bottom and on under library if you go up to library you will see something down there listed as uh the IMAP interactive mapping system. Same kind of thing. So let's look at planning real quick and we'll look at the geographic information system. No, under planning. There you go. Okay, this is what this is one of the screens you get to when you when you get the the system open, you will get a, a, a screen that gives you a list, a, a map and a list of topics, and you get a blue screen and a list of, of breakouts. And one of the breakouts, they're shown here, you see traffic counts on the right, you can get traffic counts, you can get accident information, you can get all of that with respect to every intersection in our area, every intersection in San Antonio for 2014, 15, and 16, I believe it is. Correct. And uh, they will show you for each year how many cars go by the major intersections at every hour of the day, and they will show you. Hmm? Is that unfortunate? Loads really slow. It does load slowly. It was a problem last night. I couldn't wait for it. Uh, so uh, it'll also show you accident accident counts. It will show you what those what those accidents were attributed to, whether alcohol was involved, whether there was anyone injured, how many cars were involved, all of that sort of stuff. Huge amounts of data. And they will show up as little red dots on the street showing where, when and where the accident occurred. You can actually break down to the little red dot itself and see the details on each accident. That's the city of San Antonio right there. You can see that we had a lot of accidents. And you can see there are little charts down at the bottom that show what time of day most of them occurred, what day of the week, and so forth. Looking at the congestion management program, you'll see that they attribute congestion largely to uh, accidents, traffic accidents, and, and things of that sort. 40% or so of the, of the congestion is attributable to traffic accidents nation, statewide. So you can get that kind of information off of this website. And this interactive map will let you break it down and get absolutely more information than you can possibly deal with. The problem is not, to, not to, uh, to try to look at everything. You need to pick out a couple of important things, go to those issues, and see what use you can make of it. 
if you try to look at it all as, as, as a body, you know, you can't, you can't possibly comprehend all the data and figure out relationships that wouldn't do you any good. What we need to do in congestion is look at traffic count, traffic accidents, and that sort of thing. On the, on the intersections at West and uh, uh, Jackson Keller 410, the uh, bus system has about a dozen bus stops in that little triangle area on the other side of 410 from us. And you can see that both, both streets, Jackson Keller, Jackson Keller West, uh, and uh, there on 410, there are a couple of, of the loopers that stop there. I don't think they're mentioned, but they, they do stop there. I'm thinking it might be useful for those of us who are interested in the congestion problem to pack up and go park over there in one of those parking lots or next to the street where we can see a couple of corners and start counting bus traffic during, uh, during peak traffic times of the day and just observe how long they stop whether they appear to make congestion. It doesn't seem to be something that requires rocket science, but it would give us a simple count. And so if you're interested in doing that, I'm gonna try a, a couple of days and go spend some time during the peak hours, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, from like four to six or 7.30 to nine or thereabouts, I think would be the prob probably the peak times. But the buses stop there more often because that's when people wanna move. So if they're gonna be added buses on a route, they're gonna be added during those peak traffic times. And so if we can find a way, for example, to move those buses off the street onto a bus pad or into a, a bus trans transfer zone like they have over at uh, uh, Fredericksburg Road and, and 410, for example, and the Crossroads Mall area. There are a couple of those other uh, transit uh, uh, transfer areas that take buses off the streets while they're stopped. And that would be, I think, something that would be, would be worth looking at. If we can find areas next to the street where we could build a bus pad, even if we have to condemn property to do it, to pull those buses off the side while they're, while they're loading and unloading or doing transfer from bus to bus, then that might be a way to reduce some of that traffic. Again, this is something that, that Jeannie pointed out they have looked at while well, she's been there for the last 11 years, but like I was telling John earlier, she probably hadn't spent much of that 11 years parked out there watching traffic on that particular intersection. And so this is something that's of interest to us. We can do it if we want to, and that's one of the things I'd like to suggest that we should consider doing to gather some information so we know what we're talking about when we start talking about buses. Okay, we're not done yet. Now it's my turn. Okay. <laughs> so so what, what Skip is bringing up is, in my opinion, the justification and, and uh, where we can grab the data. Uh, my thought process here is, okay, so we, we grab our information. Um, we already have, uh, we, we've, submitted, we've submitted to MPO twice and we, and we hired uh, Luis uh, RPS clots, well, RPS now, to, to go ahead and, and uh, submit those, uh, uh, those projects to them. Well, again, we got a, we got we got a we got an opening. We got a window coming open here, December twelfth. It's going to last until April first, first week of April or something. It closes, and so to me, is kind of speed is of is, is of the essence. And the question I, that I bring forth is, uh, do we want to go ahead and we gather some information, then we go ahead and bring and bring some. And I think Skip will probably have to bring this to council. Um, do we go ahead and, and engage our engineer to to help tailor this? To where, you know, MPO would bite off on it and help and help it move forward. I mean, it needs basically you got an engineer presenting to engineers. MPO is there's a bunch of geeky engineers there. I hate to say it, but that's that's what's in there. And and so, but do we do we look at doing that? And how do we get it to that point to where we could help shepherd them along to help move this forward? Because I think this is a wonderful idea. And I think it's very important to help not only the 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 issues we have on West Avenue, but also I think it helps Gladiola and all that, and I think Skip made a wonderful point as far as get those dang buses off the road, you know, get them over there if there's a way to do that. I mean, there's a grassy area, you know, closer to, uh, closer to 410 that they could, maybe we could dem part of that, that part of that parking lot and, and, and move that over anyway, so. Um, How much cooperation with VIA? I mean, VIA would have to work with this 
Or... We haven't reached out to VIA yet. This is just kind of the beginnings of this it. This is just so. gathering information. Right. Cool. Okay. Okay. Talk to Mr. Leroy Allen way to find out who to contact up there to, to, to see what's appropriate. But we don't even have a recommendation at the moment. So what we have to do first of all is gather data. We get the data together, we come up with some ideas, recommendations that we think we want to push. Then we go to council and see if we want to have, if we need engineering help to see about that. And maybe then we talk to VIA about uh, what we're looking at. I'll volunteer to go ahead and some, if you're, you're going to go ahead and go do the observation. Yes. I'll, I'll volunteer. You want to call me the day you want to go ahead and do it. Sure. I work from the house. Awesome. So I, I can uh, I can drive the all of three quarters of a mile or whatever it is to uh, to go help out with that. Uh, and if I have company, that'd be good. Otherwise, I might end up falling asleep. So uh, yeah, I, 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 I think the thought is 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 you know really what Skip said is is really you know three days of the week Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which is probably at most validity of it, and then try to catch the morning in the morning time and and one person there sure. in the morning and one person there during the evening. Yeah. Okay. And let's get, let's get some preliminary data together just to see what the real impact is. Decide what parameters we want to collect, and then move forward from there. Okay. Sounds fair. Yeah, I can do that. I'm I'm close by and I work from the house so. Is the idea to count cars? Is that what you're doing? No, we're, no. we're watching for bus, buses to stop. The impact of what buses do to traffic during the rush hour time frames, morning and evening. Okay. Buses so, stop in traffic to load and unload passengers. The passengers go across the street or wherever to transfer to other buses or, or something like that. But we got some corners where we have two or three bus stops within our visual scope. And we can sit, on, sit in the parking lot at HGB, for example, and watch three bus stops on 410 on west heading south west heading north uh, we could look at the other end of the parking lot look at jackson keller on going east east and west and west going north and south at those two corners having video would probably be impactful because it sounds like just a verbal description of it or just writing it down might not be well what i'm thinking is we look at a bus stop we, we maybe we've got three bus stops we're looking at we put a couple of couple of columns in there. We put bus stop one. We have a lot of time. Say bus stop two minutes, whatever, and uh, traffic plus or minus. If they have if they have an impact on traffic, cars are piling up behind them. We put a plus, maybe two pluses if there are lots of traffic. We can figure out a way to do that. Okay, some way to quantify it formally then. Yeah, okay. some kind okay. of way to, to get some kind of general uh, formal impact statement as to how many buses there are what their impact is on traffic, and then to see whether it's worth considering putting in a bus pad someplace or doing something else to get that, tra get that bus traffic off they, the street. They do have a schedule. I know they do. Yeah. But I think, but not, yeah, but that's, that only tells you how many buses. That only tells you how many buses. It doesn't tell you how long they're there or what the impact is on the particular area. Yeah. That makes sense. Yep. At we, particular time, too. Yeah, Com committee, we do have to move forward and on this, but but I do think move forward on the on the on the meeting. But I do think the thought is 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 there's really kind of two things we can probably do. One is 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 the buses, uh, which maybe be the harder one, unfortunately. But the other one is is the fact that that narrows down and we lose that turn lane as it gets closer to uh, uh, to uh, a 410. And and if we can figure out what the impact of that is or what the impact of fixing it would be. Uh, or make some recommendations. I think that's what we want to try to move this yeah. towards. We could probably get some of that data from VIA that shows the bus Well, we can get the count. number of buses mm -hmm. and how many buses there are per hour. We could probably get that from VIA. Mm -hmm. But the impact on traffic, we can't get without going and looking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And the right-of-way, too. How wide is that right-of-way? Yeah. The potential for expansion. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have that, but somebody's got it. The textile or somebody's got it. Yeah. Well, it's our, it's our land. That's, well, we got it somewhere. So we should we should know where we're at. So yeah, so okay. Uh, I think we're done with that discussion. I think we're done. But so that, that was, I think that was just our work session. Yes, <laughs> I think I think we did go through our work session. So basically, uh, item number seven and old business item number one. Uh, I think let's move on to to old business item number two. Is there any announcements uh, by the by the members? Skip. Nope. Okay. Uh, Bernard. Uh, no, not at this time. Okay. Mark? Well, other than uh, apparently food does not bribe our citizenship here to go <laughs> ahead and show up. Um, 
No, no, uh, no announcements. It got me here. I'll, I'll look. <laughs> hey, well, then it was worthwhile. Yes. Um, so it, I'll go ahead and try it again next time. I'm going to go ahead and volunteer. I'll bring some. I guess I'll bring the same amount. So we'll feed the various uh, forces and constabulary and uh, firemen yeah, here. I think, I think maybe we overdid the. Yeah, that's yeah. my announcement. We overdid the groceries, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, the fire guys may disagree. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, we, we'll we'll see what they see if they like that. But I mean, I, I think it's still a good idea. Uh, unfortunately, we had we, we need to find maybe another way. I think that. Uh, uh, I think we had some earlier discussions about using some sign time, which I believe we do have sign time that we can use, uh, the electronic signs to announce the, our, our particular meetings. I'd like to go ahead and see that up there. Um, I, I think we have the right or privilege to be able to use those signs. And uh, I, I don't know if you, as a city manager or as a member of council, can go ahead and. No, uh, and, and push I'm sorry. Them, so. We as a city have a certain amount of space, um, like we've recently done with our passports and events that we hold here in the commons. So we're, we're, we're allowed under our contract with uh, the company to uh, put messages or information up there. And so we could certainly put that up there. Um, and again, we as staff will continue to put uh, this meeting on our website, Facebook, you know, those kind of things. That's so, good. I mean, I, you know, some next door people were, were claiming that the next door denizens were claiming that we were not communicating clearly enough, and I think perhaps a large electronic sign right here with, you know, arrows and, you know, fingers or something like that here to, to properly communicate that we are indeed, you know. Enough of the stand-up so, routine. Uh, Jack, Jack, any, uh, Miss, is, I got to well, practice somehow, right? So, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's my only announcement. And Mr. Sanderson, thank you. Staff will appreciate the food on Monday. Yeah. We'll tell them we just brought it for them today. I, I, I think we need to take it into the community. I don't think the community talk about this. I think we just have to find folks that are willing to host. I don't even know if it has to be a formal meeting because then we got the Open Meetings yeah. Act and all that trash. But um, I think we just have to go into homes and have folks invite their neighbors and hey, let's talk about streets or drainage or whatever it is. Because when we started talking about drainage, we sure got a lot of activity out of this group. Yeah. Here. Everybody yeah. sort of woke up. But um, you know, as a, I was a member of some Master Plan Committee that got dissolved or something. But anyway, we had good turnout when we went into somebody's home and they invited their friends kind of and it was like, okay. I don't know. I think we're going to continue to hear complaints like Mark was talking about unless we do that. Mark well, and I both put stuff on next door. Yeah. We got comments from people that not much participants. Yeah, we, 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 we certainly had. Um, That's. Would happen. Some some uh, people who might have medical issues, I guess. I I don't know, but uh, uh, but uh, making responses and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I, I would say uh, who knows how how much next door reaches. People. Well, I I would suggest. Uh, no, I don't read it. So, Jack, I would suggest uh, maybe at some point that you could have sort of a, a public town hall meeting. Uh, on a certain subject like drainage and or streets where Councilman Corn can be there and another councilman so you don't have the quorum issue uh, from that standpoint but it also is a part of these you as members have been evaluated and looking at this so you can kind of let the citizens know this group has been doing this and here are the problems in our community and here's what we're looking to do kind of more of a public town hall forum that could be led by the councilman as a part of this MPO group just just throwing that out there so would meeting at a restaurant at 5.30 or 6 o'clock at nighttime uh, during the week, um, getting a small room or something like that, would that improve things? Would, uh, now, we couldn't be the ones to, to spring for folks' meals or anything, but, I mean, would that be, you know, something well, that, that, that is doable or useful? I was just thinking useful? of inviting people to my house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't hold 50 yeah. people, but if 10 or 15 come, we can handle and yeah, well, same here. We could do it for our house. We have enough room for you know ten or fifteen. You know we don't have. We'll we put it on Mr. Squire's tab. Yeah. Be nice to my wife first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. But anyway, that's okay. Let's move on. Uh, Jack and, and Mark, Jack, thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. And, and so um, I do have one thing I just wanted to uh, announce or, or make an announcement. I just wanted to personally thank Skip for fighting for us at the last council meeting to allow us to continue to do what we do and, and evolve what we do. And so I, I personally appreciate the, uh, 
uh, your words and, and your, your, resi your resolute uh, <laughs> attitude to, uh, to help us out. So just want to thank you for that, Skip. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, agenda item number three. Uh, oh, also one more thing, I'm sorry, before I do, is I want to also encourage, let's make sure and put this on the billboard next time too when we have one. I just want to make sure we do this. So thank you, thank you. Uh, item number three, announce the date and time of the next meeting. Uh, everybody time to check their schedules and see when we'd like to meet again. I'm assuming it's going to be in January. I, I don't think anything's going to happen the rest of December at this point. I think that's a reasonable assumption, John. I think so, we've got some individual projects that we can do now at the end of the year. Right. Uh, but I don't think we necessarily need to have a meeting to get them done. Do you think? So the first the first week is uh, if we're going to if we're going to go ahead and s s use a Saturday as a date at this point, unless we decide to change. Um, would be the fifth. Uh, I would probably recommend the twelfth, being that the first of the year everybody's getting back in from vacation and getting tied up and getting tied in everything. Um, and so, uh, my recommendation would be would be Saturday, uh, January twelfth of twenty nineteen. Discussion. I agree. Fine with me, I agree. I uh, I'll go ahead and go with that. Sounds reasonable. Sounds, Sounds good. good to me. Okay, so next meeting will be Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, January twelfth of twenty nineteen. Uh, okay, it is now 11.52, and a call for adjournment. Uh, I move that we adjourn. Okay. Have a second? Second. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you. Well, 10 a.m., I assume. So what is the so tell me about the parks meeting the park the parks thing there what's what's going on with that? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. This is the enabling legislation from the council. Oh, okay. So I'm also a member of the parks commission as well too. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. oh my god thanks for volunteering yes. all right yeah. I, I, no problem <laughs> i think the parks committee i mean that